What are you crazy? What are you crazy? Yeah, well, sometimes. Yeah, it's the worst. I hate remasters. I won't even watch a movie. If it came out in mono mono sound and I and I open it up, I put it in my player and it's stereo, I turn it off. Nope. I'll tell you because it generally speaking it's bad to be a purist. Being a purist isn't isn't ideal. Kind of really isn't. But when it comes to certain things, you can entertain the purism. You know what I'm saying? You can you can entertain the purism. And there's nothing wrong with that. So when it comes to Rolling Stones, and I've never been a fan of the Rolling Stones, but when I feel like being a fan of the Rolling Stones, when I want to hear, you know, uh, Sympathy for the Devil, or, you know, Paint It Black, or I Am Waiting, you know, Wes Anderson cuts. Um... I don't know if I am waiting though. Actually, I think that was in Aftermath. I listened to them in mono. Thank you very much. I'll take them in mono. I want some asshole 20 years down the line. I think this is better. This is a better choice right here. Some nobody asshole messing with the music, screwing things over, releasing it. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> oh, ball dinners. I know the pain of aspect ratio fucking. <laughs> yeah, I know the pain of that too. <laughs> but I like learning about these things. I'm very resistant to certain things. I don't know if it's a Taurus thing. But uh, a lot of times I'm resistant. But when I finally, uh, after, you know, two years, I start acknowledging that I should get into it. I start learning new things. Hey, whatever. Whatever, I'm not, I ain't complaining. Glorious audiophiles are not the worst. And I'm not going to say I'm an audiophile. <clears throat> because I don't, I'm not going to berate people or, I'm not even going to come out there and say that, you know, you could tell a difference if I put on high, high definition audio and we did a little bit of a test. I'm not even going to say that because, to be honest with you, I don't give a fuck if you hear it or you don't. <laughs> Why would I give a damn if you can hear it? <laughs> Here, put rocks up to your ears and listen to whatever you want. It doesn't matter to me. I like high definition audio. I'm not gonna push it on, on people though. But for me, I love headphones. Headphones are my favorite thing in the world. They really are. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I like them. I wonder if the the uptuning to the higher frequency is bad, and it and it all turns out to be bad in the long run. I wonder if I should down tune everything. Glorious, n glorious. I'll tell you, people who listen to vi to vinyl are the worst. I wouldn't I wouldn't be saying that because people who listen to vi to vinyl are the best. In that, with music. Look, let me put it this way. It's the it's the best way to support the artist is to purchase the vinyl. Hey, you can you, go ahead. You can listen to it on on um, Spotify. You can download it on a site. You know what I'm saying? You, I mean, you. I'm not saying do that. I'm just saying you can. You can do that. But consider buying the vinyl to support the artist because you have something that is of a higher resolution, you have a physical copy that can't be taken away from you. Let's say if you bought music on Steam, you know what I'm saying? It's something to consider. And, you know, players, it, they're, they're sort of bringing that back around, you know, so they're making it, they're making it, uh, making it popular again, or at least it has been popular. When I see vinyl collections in Best Buy, I know that they're making a, a big play, and they've been doing it for a few years. But owning a physical copy, you see, when you own it on a, in a digital copy, you don't own nothing. You own nothing. When you have a physical copy, 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 you know what I'm saying? You have it in your hands. You can play it on a player. You can sell it. You can break it. You can do whatever. And 
the special attention and barrier to entry financially and with attention span and even the uh you know the spectrum of your quality buds you know if you're just some dumb asshole who doesn't give a damn what they're fed you know you can have a dinty more beef stew in a can you can have your music at a really low bit rate i mean that's up to you you know you can even forget about you can forget about the fact that there's there is such thing as high definition at all which in the future there will be there will be nothing high definition it'll just be shit and there won't ever have been high definition that's just the way that's just the way it goes so you can you can do that you can hey be, be a time traveler live in the future today don't care about anything don't care about quality i love vinyl transfers and i remember an airbnb in brooklyn bushwick new york i was there for a few days and this Airbnb lady had a big vinyl collection. And I was listening to things that I never would have listened to. And that's what it's about. It's not about holding a physical copy. It's not about making sure it can't be taken from. It's about the curation and the selection that, that you have at your disposal. And, you know, that's, that's a bottleneck, of course. But it's also a good thing. Because it gets you out of the immediate path of going right to your Spotify and going to your, you know, the co collected songs that you've been listening to forever. You go to vinyl selections and you see things that, yeah, I, maybe I wouldn't listen to that normally. If, on, if I was on Spotify, I can, I can always put on anything. Instead, you're like this. You know what? I'm going to listen to... Um, I, I mean, best... Not the best example, but a good example just because of the, the times. If you're going to listen to David Bowie... You're, you're, mo you're more likely going to see a David Bowie vinyl in your face before you do a CD. Or maybe, or even music on Spotify, you know? I don't know how many. You know, I don't know if people that liked Bowie when they were younger are using Spotify right now. Anyway. So it's about that. But I was listening to the Shining score on vinyl. And it pleased me so. And David Bowie, and it pleased me so. And the Moody Blues, and I was so pleased. I just wish I was, I had a camera going just so I could jump around. If only, if only. Anyway, whatever. And John Mouse is a good example of that too, Lavender Chestnut. Yeah, I saw John Mouse, John Mice, his vinyl. Z Buy vinyls. It, you can download it anywhere. You can stream it anywhere. Buy the vinyls. Yeah, this. Oh, it's so good. The Shining in and it was so crazy, Diddy. I'm listening to the Shining score. I have it playing analog out of a vinyl player and speakers. It was cra It was. It was insane. It was crazy. It was. It, it was. It changed my life. It changed my life because I was always like this. I'll piss all over their vinyls. I'll, you know what, I'll piss all over his, you know what I'm saying? I'll, anyway, you get what I'm, what I'm saying. And after I started spinning those vinyls around, I was like, listen to the way this sounds. I'm in New York right now. I'm getting weird ass energy. It was so crazy. And Kay Annie, most, a lot of vinyls do come with the downloads too. That is true. Mouse box set is 650. <laughs> nice, nice. Nice.